does compost tea work? There's so much information out there on blogs and YouTube videos. They all say it works great, but what does the science say? I'm going to have a look at that in this video. I'm going to discuss the three main claims for compost tea. One, it adds nutrients. Two, a foliar spray will combat pathogens. And three, it adds important microbes to the soil. I'm also going to show you some data from a five-year study to see the effects of compost tea. And then I'm going to discuss a real potential problem with using compost tea in your garden. One of the claims is that compost tea adds nutrients to soil and to plants if it's used as a foliar spray. Well, it turns out that this claim is mostly true, but there are some caveats to this. The compost that's used to make the tea has nutrients in it. And if you add things like molasses and fertilizer and fish heads and kelp meal and all those other mysterious things, they all have nutrients too. So your final mixture has plant nutrients in it. When you make tea, the tea will have plant nutrients in it. And when you spread it around the soil, you will be adding nutrients. There's no magic here. But there's an important thing that people are forgetting. There's something in science called the law of conservation of mass. That's a fancy term that says you can't make more nutrients. Whatever nutrients were in that pail when you started making the tea, those represent the total amount of nutrients you have when you're finished making the tea. Now, molecules can be changed around. A large protein molecule might get degraded and release some nitrates as a nitrate molecule, which plants can now use. You might even convert different types of nitrogen one to the other. So nitrites may become nitrates. I mean, the microbes do those kind of manipulations. But at the end of the day, the total amount of nutrients in your tea is exactly the same as what you started with. In fact, if anything, they might be a little lower because some of that nitrogen gets converted to nitrogen gas and will leave the tea. But I suspect that's pretty minimal. When you spread this tea on soil, you're definitely adding nutrients. And we know nutrients make plants grow better. Now, how many nutrients do you really spread? On one of my blog posts, I did an analysis of different types of tea, and I came out with an average MPK value for compost tea, 0.2 zero, zero. No potassium, no phosphate, and a tiny amount of nitrogen. I mean, if you went out and bought that as a fertilizer, you'd say, hey, this is almost not worth buying because there's nothing in it. Now, some people claim that the tea is easier to spread over a large area than the original compost, and that's a valid comment. The problem is that to spread it over a large area, you have to dilute it a lot. You take the original compost, you make tea. That's a dilution. You then take the tea and dilute it further before you spray it. So now you're spraying such low levels of nutrients. Why bother? Just take the original compost and spread it around. What about a foliar spray? So the claim is made that if I spray these nutrients onto the plants, they get absorbed by the leaves and the plant gets to use them right away. Well, this is also partially true. When you spray nutrients onto leaves, they can absorb some of those nutrients. They can't absorb all of them. And one thing we do know is that foliar spraying is a very poor way of giving the macronutrients to plants. So that's things like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, calcium. Plants need so much of those that you can't get enough into the plant from foliar spraying. I suspect most of the benefit of foliar spraying with compost tea, as far as nutrients go, is gained when it rains and it washes those nutrients onto the soil. If you want to add nutrients to your soil, just spread the compost. It's so much easier. Claim number two, foliar spraying of that compost tea will reduce diseases on the plants. Now, there is some solid science to support this idea. So if we have a look at the leaf of a plant, to you and I, it looks green and shiny and clean. But in actual fact, it has a thick layer of microbes living there. And those microbes are mostly beneficial. 
And those beneficial microbes tend to keep pathogens away. There's a competition for space and nutrients on those leaves. And the good guys win the battle most of the time. So the thinking goes something like this. If microbes on the leaf are protecting the leaf from disease, then if we add more microbes with compost tea, the leaves will be even better protected. But there's a flaw in that logic. The microbes that live on leaves live in a very tough environment. They're specially selected by that environment. It's mostly dry. The sun produces a lot of UV light, and UV light kills microbes. So these microbes have to protect themselves from UV light. There aren't many nutrients on these leaves, and there's large fluctuations in temperature. Cold at night, hot during the day. Now we go to our tea. It's extremely wet. I mean, the tea is full of water. Nice constant temperature, nice amount of oxygen. This is a great place for a lot of microbes to grow, but that doesn't mean these microbes will grow on the leaves. And if they don't grow on the leaves, they're not going to outcompete pathogens. Well, what does the science say? There have been lots of studies that looked at this. And there are some studies out there that show if you take compost tea, you can control certain types of disease. But in most of those studies, they know which microbes they're brewing. And they brew specific ones for a specific disease. Most of the studies show neutral results, which means there's no effect at all. Some of them show a negative result. And in fact, some of these studies have shown that you actually have an increase in diseases on the leaves that have been sprayed. Overall, there's no support for the idea of spraying compost tea in the garden for controlling diseases. One of the fundamental problems with this whole idea is that you have no idea what microbes you have in your tea. And now you spray them on the plants. They could be good bacteria, bad bacteria, bacteria that just won't live on leaves. You have no idea what your compost tea will do to the plants, so don't use foliar sprays. The third claim is that compost tea adds microbes to the soil, and this is probably the main reason people make compost tea. And again, there's some science here that does make sense. We know that soil that has a lot of microbes in it is healthier soil, it has higher levels of nutrients, it's better aggregated, and it grows better plants. There's no doubt about that. So it seems like a very simple solution. Get some compost, brew it. The brewing process does increase the number of microbes, and then we apply it to soil. I mean, we've increased the number of microbes in the soil. But there's a significant flaw in this logic. There's a basic property of microbes, and this is true no matter where they grow, whether it's your skin, on a plant leaf, in the soil, on your kitchen counter, or in a pail where you're brewing tea. Microbes are always at capacity. What does this mean? Well, microbes replicate very quickly. If you take some bacteria and put them in a lab, they will multiply every 20 minutes. These things grow really fast. They take advantage of their environment. So if the food source goes up, the population explodes. When the food source comes down, the population shrinks. A good way to understand this concept is to think about a football stadium. We have a football stadium out there with 80,000 seats. All the seats have customers in them. It's full. Another 5,000 fans show up and want tickets. Well, they can't get in because there's no room. The stadium is full. In another town, there's a different stadium. It's a small one. It only has 20,000 seats. But it's always full too. And if some customers show up, they can't get seats because it's always full. Your soil is like that stadium. If you have really crappy soil, you have a small stadium and it can't hold many microbes. If you have really good soil, you have a big stadium and it can hold a lot of microbes. But in both cases, the number of microbes is fixed. It's based on food resource. Adding more microbes to that soil doesn't increase the microbes. The extra microbes die out because there's not enough food for them. 
I took one of the commercial micro products that's specifically sold to apply to soil so that you increase the numbers of microbes. And I calculated how many microbes are actually added to the top six inches of soil. Well, it turns out that if all the microbes in the bottle are alive, and science has shown that's really the case, you will add one bacteria for every 3,000 native bacteria that are already in the soil. Adding one bacteria to 3,000 has very little effect. Think about it. If you give that 3,000 some food, there'll be 6,000 in 20 minutes. What effect do you think adding one bacterium is going to do? Nothing. What does the science really say? Well, the studies that I've seen indicate no increase in microbes in the soil after adding compost tea. That's the total number we're talking about. There's another important aspect that we have to consider here, and that's the actual makeup of the population, the different species that are in there. Do those ratios change once you've added compost tea? And the answer to that is no, they don't. Adding compost tea doesn't change the microbe population that's in the soil. Does compost tea grow better plants? Well, there's a lot of studies out there that apply compost tea to various types of soil, and they actually show the plants grow better. The problem with 99% of those studies is that they compare compost tea to water. Well, we know compost tea has nutrients in it, and we know that if we add nutrients to plants, they grow better. So those studies really don't show us very much. Now, I did find a really good study that looked at this over a five-year period, and it compared various different applications. So it looked at water, activated compost tea, a commercial product, compost, and wood chips. Then after five years, it actually measured the amount of growth that took place in trees. And what it found was that water, compost tea, and the commercial product gave the same results. Mulch, on the other hand, and wood chips had increases in growth. This study also looked at the soil properties. How did the soil change over that five-year period? And what it found was that the compost tea made really no difference to the soil. And yet compost and wood chips increased the moisture holding properties, increased organic matter in the soil, increased the nutrient level, and it had higher respiration. Now, respiration measures the activity of the microbes in the soil. Higher respiration means more microbes being more active in the soil. The study concludes that compost tea makes no difference to your soil or to plant growth. Now, I'd like to discuss a serious downside to making compost tea. When you're making it, you have no idea what kind of microbes you're brewing. And some of the human pathogens and even plant pathogens can grow in those conditions that you're using. You could be growing a whole pail full of E. coli. You've probably heard that in the news. It's quite toxic. So you could be making yourself sick and you could be making your plants sick by brewing this tea. That is probably a minor risk, but it is a real risk you should be concerned about. So what's the best way of making this compost tea? Well, I have a really simple solution for you. Bread the compost on the soil and wait until it rains. The water will percolate through that compost and make the tea naturally for you. Less work no stink, and you don't have to worry about being contaminated with E. coli. Which type of compost is best? Well, there's so many options, and I discuss those options and select the best one in this video right here called Selecting the Best Compost. Happy Gardening!